What is going up guys, this is the Flamespite here, and we are back with a brand new paper game, and this paper game is actually offered by a comment, um, Clark Roberts, he commented on one of my last videos, and he asked if I could make a Super Street Fighter 2 game, and so I just thought about it, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And so basically this is it, uh, it took a long time, and as you can see, I actually colored my paper games. Yes, I put color in my paper games for once, and let's just hope that it all turns out well in the end. Um, it was actually really funny drawing all of these characters, because like halfway through it, I was just like, this looks nothing like the picture, but it ended up being semi art So, basically, thank you Clark Roberts for the suggestion, and let's get on into playing the game. Now, first, the first thing that, um, we are going to go over it's just like the process of this game since like I said it took a long time and I was just wondering how you can create a fighter game uh, where you basically like in the game you use like joysticks and then like the buttons into a paper game um, so I just like this was my initial design it wasn't really that much of a design but it was just you have your play area and then um, I actually thought of it to make this into a TCG so a trading card game um, although it's not really heavily Dependent on the trading cards, it's just that, or the cards, it's just that that's how you do your cats. Now, so that was the first design, and I just kept on writing things, and I came up with my battlefield next. So, this was just a battlefield, you can see it's just black and white from what the actual thing is. And then I got my characters, and after those were drawn, then I basically colored in everything to where we have the common battlefield. And um, the template for my characters and my special uh, moves. And as a side note, all of those pages, well, the, the final ones, so you can see are the ones that have the template for the background and the characters. That is actually going to be on my Paper Games website, uh, which is going to be in the description. So if you want to uh, print out this game and cut it out, then all the templates will be there along with my list of rules, which I have over here, which is like this little paper thing. Um, one thing that the template does not have on it, however, is the cards themselves, which isn't really much of concern, so you can either make cards um, so, like my um, OPRPG, so like you can fold it over a lot, or you can do what I just did for this game um, to save paper. I just have um, a few cards that I just cut out from regular printing paper and just wrote the moves on them. Um, the cards are nothing special for this game, it's just your way of doing your move. Um, so basically, let's go into the rules. Now this is a two player game, um, it can only be two player, I, I guess you can play it one player, um, however it's just not as fun I think, so it's best if you have a partner for this one, and each um, player chooses a character with stats. So there's only two characters that I have for each player. Um, you can see that they're on like whatever side they're facing. Those are your two characters you can choose. These actually aren't supposed to be in there yet. And um, basically you either choose your speed character or you choose your powerful character. And that's the only two differences between the two. Um, one has more speed and one has more power. Now, power is what you use to do damage. So whenever you like, if you get an attack in, then you do that much damage to your opponent. If you have a higher speed, and if you guys, uh, I'll go into more of the rules later, but if you have a higher speed, then basically you're gonna attack more often than your opponent. So it's like the trade-off. You can choose and you can try to strategize between which playstyle you want. More power um, and bigger hits, or more speed and more frequent hits. So. Um, now that you chose a character, so we'll just use, um, Ken and Zangief. I don't play Street Fighter that often, so I don't actually know the characters' names that well. Um, however, basically this is going to be what your setup looks like. So each side is going to have your character on the little battle area. And you're going to have a box open that is going to hold your special move, or your, um... B move or side move, I don't actually know what it's called, your uh, Sudoku move. Um, sorry, I just had to do that. And each player is going to gain six cards. Now, um, these six cards are going to comprise of three movement cards, so jump, stay, and crouch, and three action cards. Primary attack, 
special attack and block. Um, so these don't have to look special or anything, they just have to say what they are. And each um, player is going to have these six cards in their hands. Um, what else is needed is a die, and that's pretty much it. So templates, your cards, and your die. So there are two phases for each turn in which both characters, um, characters, both players put down cards at the same time. So you have your movement phase. So remember those three movement cards. Well, first things first, you're going to um, use a movement. So let's just go with. We're gonna have Zan Geif stay and Ken jump. So, um, whenever you're playing, your guys are gonna count to the count of three and you're going to like say one, two, three, and then you both place down a card. So then let's say Ken jumps and Zan Geif stays. Um, basically, on my um, rule sheet, I have a list of all the different move combinations and the outcomes for them. Um, so you're gonna have to rely on that rules list. I am not really gonna go over that many of them in this video because it would take way too long since there's a lot of different scenarios um, for each thing. So we have Ken Jump, Zan Guy Stay, and now we're going to go on to the next part of each, um, everyone's moves, which is going to be their attack phase. Um, so keep in mind that Ken is jumping, Zan Guy is staying, and let's say on the count of three, we want uh, let's go with that. We want Ken to block and we'll have Zan Guy do his primary attack. Now, basically, um, if you look onto the rules, we have, I'm just going to go over a few main functions of it, including counter rolls, um, which is exactly what's going to happen right now. So if a character blocks, um, as explained in the rules, and the other character attacks, then the one who blocks um, gets to roll a counter roll. Now what a counter roll is, is just the ability for the person who blocks to do damage on their opponent, which is a, it's, it's a small chance, but it has a chance to do damage and not take damage themselves. Um, so since Ken um, got to block, then that means that um, he gets to roll a counter roll. Now, um, whenever you roll a counter roll, you roll a die, six sided die, and if you get a one or a two, then you do the power damage on your opponent. I forgot to mention this earlier, but every single character has 10 HP in the game, or 10 hit points. Um, no matter who they are, no matter their speed or their power, they all have 10, so it's it's pretty even. So since we get, get a counter roll, so Ken's gonna roll, so if he gets a 1 or a 2, then he's gonna do 2 damage to Stan Guy. So it's a 5. So he doesn't do any damage, nothing happens this round. You guys reset. So. That's that's the end. That's the end of each round. So there's two phases. You have your movement phase and you have your um, attack phase or your action phase. So let's go on to specials because that's going to be another that's a semi-confusing um, subject for this, um, which I feel like I had to explain. So if we had, let's just say they both stayed and one person uses a special and let's say the other person uses, uh, let's just go like that, special and attack. So, whenever a character uses a special, then that means they're vulnerable. So, if the opponent attacks, no matter if they're jumping or down below, then the person who's using the special is going to take damage. Um, they are vulnerable to any attack, and, um, yes. So, you might think that specials aren't that good, but then you get a special um, option onto the main text box area right here. Um, so you can use your special. So that just basically means that you have a special in play or a special move into play. Um, now what special moves do is after this turn, your opponent has to either go up um, or they have to change their position from where they were. So if Ken stayed um, the next turn, he would either have to jump or crouch um, or else he would take 1.5 times the damage that of the power. So let's say if there's a special in play, this is the next move. Let's say that Ken stays again, so that means he knows that he's going to take the 1.5 um, times damage, and he uses a primary attack while Dan Guy blocks. Um, I have this example on the instructions as well, so this is just like explaining the scenario. So in this case, Ken is going to take 1.5 times the damage of the power 
since the special was in play and he did not move from his position. So we're going to take the special off the board. And now Ken is going to take um, 4.5 damage, so it's fine to have half health. But he's going to take 4.5 health damage, um, which is going to lower him down to 5.5 HP just from the special move. And then also since he attacked and Zangai blocked, that means that Zangai gets a counter roll. So he rolled a 1, so that means he does an extra 3 damage. So that's, he does 7.5 damage, which would leave Ken with 2.5 HP left. So special moves, although they can be very risky, they can be very beneficial. Um, however, most of the time your opponent is not going to stay in the same position because they don't want to take that damage. So let's just say that you know this and you know that they won't want to take the damage. So you're basically knowing that they're either going to crouch or they're going to jump in the next move, which can benefit you for whatever um, attack or defense you're going to use for the next round, whether you're going to crouch or you're going to jump. Speaking of crouching and jumping and the benefits for each of those, let's say that Ken jumps and let's say that uh, the end guy crouches. No matter what happens in this scenario, if you crouch while your opponent jumps, then you're going to do damage. Like, the one who's crouching is going to do damage. Um, that's just another small rule. I'm just trying to go over the more nitpicky rules. And, um, let's say if both people block, then nothing happens. Um, let's see, any other m major rules? Um, if you are crouching, then you cannot defend. So if you're crouching down below, then you cannot use a defend, you cannot use a counter roll. So it's basically... Crouching is the counter for jumping, jumping is more or less the counter for staying, and staying and the other person staying is basically the same. It's, it's, you just have to have to re read the rules. Um, there's too many for me to explain right now, I'm trying to keep this video short. Um, however, I'm most likely going to actually film a round of me playing this with someone else um, eventually, so that it would be easier to understand what's happening. So basically that's the point of the game. I have the different characters I can now show. Um, I spent quite a lot of time on this game, just finished it yesterday, had this idea for a long time, have all my rules refined and ready to go on the website, so if you guys feel like playing this game ever, then please just go down to the description and go to my um, website so you can print them out. Um, so basically this is going to wrap up the video. This is the Flamespot, signing out.